I almost stopped collecting fragrances until I got these in my hands and it kind of reignited that spark for me. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Did I actually almost throw in the towel? No, I didn't. But I can tell you with 100% certainty, there have been a few times where I go down the rabbit hole adding new things to the collection to keep things fresh on the channel and it does start to get a little bit tiring because you're buying a lot of things that run together and just don't really give you that excitement and that, that, that fun joy that you had when you first started out. Because think about it, when you're first starting out, you have so many fragrances out there to discover that are great, you know, because there are so many great options that have been hyped up and have been discovered. I've gotten to the point where I have all of those now. And so now it's a matter of trying to find some new things that maybe haven't been discovered yet that can start to get a little bit tiring and you want to get that excitement back, but it can be hard sometimes. And so just for me personally, these are a handful of fragrances that when I got them in and tried them for the first time, it kind of brought back that excitement that I had often when I was first starting out going on seven years ago. Some of these are a little bit more recent. Other of these I've had for a while. Again, this is the type of thing that I've had happen quite a few times. And I'm sure you guys out there who have decent sized collections have felt the same thing. This first one is one that I've talked about quite a bit. And I still remember exactly where I was in my house when I tried this for the first time, which is a little bit weird and specific, but it's true. This one left a pretty big impact on me right away. It's Carolyn Herrera, Iris Empire. So yeah, I don't know what it is about it. I was in my laundry room of all places when I pulled this one out of the box, tried it for the first time, and immediately I was like, okay, I'm onto something here. And on paper, this might look like just another iris scent, right? And in one way it is, but on the other hand, it's not, it's so much more. You can say that it's somewhat similar to Dior Homme Intense and things of that like, but really it does its own thing here. And the way I've described it, and this is the best way I can put it on paper and, and kind of tell it to you without you trying it yourself, is it reminds me a little bit of Dior Homme Intense with that chocolatey iris sweetness, but then you have leather in here. And the type of leather that they're using is very similar to that being used in another fragrance from the same brand, now discontinued, and that's CH Men Privé. That was a beautiful set. It was $50 all day long before it got discontinued. That's a, a leather and whiskey scent. And I get that exact same type of leather in here. And because of that, I almost slightly pick up on a little bit of a whiskey boozy note. Now, do I think that note is actually in here? Probably not. But again, it's the type of leather that was being used in CH Men Privé that we've been conditioned to also alongside of that smell that whiskey that just reminds me of that. So it's like the best of both worlds, a nice leathery, slightly boozy scent mixing with a sweeter, more modern iris. And it is beautiful. The downside to this one is the price. It's expensive, it, you know, mid to low $200 on discounters for a designer. You know, this is their more exclusive line and I will give credit where credit's due. The presentation is amazing. Magnetic cap, nice looking bottle. But again, not everybody's gonna wanna pay that much for a designer and I get that. But just kind of, you know, speaking from a personal aspect here, this is one that I tried and it just brought that spark back and it made me excited to continue to explore new scents again. So this one really special. I love it. I've talked about it a lot already, but it's great stuff. We're switching gears completely with this next one and going to a fresher, more summertime scent. It's Aqua de Jo Profondo. So you guys who have been watching the channel since the beginning, again, about seven years ago is when I started, I've loved Aqua de Jo Profumo from the very beginning. That was one of my more first premium, more expensive purchases. You know, it's $100 on discounters, a little bit more than it was back then. Now it's maybe a bit more the parfum, uh, but it was a big purchase for me. As soon as I got it in, it was love at first sniff. And I have worn Aqua de Jo Profumo consistently for years, and I still do wear it. And the parfum, you know, that DNA is gonna be one that's gonna be in heavy rotation for me 
uh, for as long as I can imagine, right? Until I can't wear it anymore because you can't get any more and I somehow run out. Like I love that stuff. However, they've released some flankers in between there, Aqua de Jo, Absolu, and you know, a few others that maybe weren't as exciting. And so, you know, when I wanted to try Profondo, it was one that I figured I was going to like because my track record with the line has been good. But this one stood out in a big way. Has mineral notes, sea notes, and this kind of um, aromatic kind of mid-range here. Really good for summertime. It's a unique aquatic that I haven't smelled really anywhere else aside from like a Zaro Chrome Extreme, which is relatively similar at a more affordable price point. But other than that, this kind of stands on its own and is just something a bit different and exciting for this genre, which oftentimes these fresh aquatic fragrances start to run together. And after you've bought as many that I have, again, that can get a little bit boring and not very exciting. Also, we can talk about the fact that they're releasing a Parfum, which I cannot wait to get my hands on. The second it's available for me to purchase, I'm getting it. I'll probably be paying retail or even a bit over. If I have the option to get it, I will do that, but I don't know when it's gonna pop up to where I can buy it. I'm super pumped for that one, as you can probably imagine. But for this video, just the regular Profondo brought that spark back for me. This is my 200 mil pretty much full. I have a 125 that I wear out of more consistently. Um, but yeah, I, I liked it so much that I just bought a backup. Next up, we have Pure Excess Night by Paco Rabanne. You guys know this one. I've talked about it quite a bit as well. I like the original Pure Excess. I think it's really good. And with the track record of Paco Rabanne, these days focusing heavily still on the Invictus lineup, again, when they're putting out these new releases, it can start to get a little bit tiring and you might not look forward to them as much as maybe you would some other scents or from some other brands. And Pure Excess Night was one that I got in because it looked interesting and I wasn't sure how much I was going to like it. Turns out, immediately, I love this stuff. Unfortunately, it's getting a bit harder to find. You gotta be on the lookout for it. You can jump on my mailing list, texting list. I'll notify you when rare stuff like this comes into stock, but you know, it's again, coming from more of a personal side of things. I'm just sharing what has reignited that spark for me over the years, and this is one of them at one point. I've had this for, well, ever since it first came out. Off the top of my head, I can't remember. But when it was readily available, I was featuring this one as much as I could in the fall and winter months. Very spicy off the top. It has cumin and a couple other spices, maybe a nutmeg, I can't remember for sure. But it hits you hard. It's not for everybody, it really wakes you up but that's what I love about it. It's fun, it's exciting, it's new and it's interesting. And this was a great release that unfortunately, we're just not gonna be getting this type of thing from designer brands as much anymore. They are really leaning into what works for the masses, obviously for the big sale numbers, this isn't one of them, but I really love it and it was one that just brought that excitement back for me. This next one is gonna make sense for a lot of you guys, and I would wager that a lot of you guys would probably be on the same page as me with this one in particular. And it is Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Forever. So I've told this story a million times. If you're new, or if you just wanna hear it again, the Light Blue line, in my opinion, peaked with O Intense. I think that was just kind of one of their best releases, and it was relatively early on. And since then, they've gone downhill. With each passing year that they put out a new one, they've gotten a bit more boring and a bit more cookie cutter. And it got to the point for me where I just wasn't looking forward to a new light blue release anymore. And oftentimes I would really think hard before I would purchase one. You know, it, it, even if I wanted to cover it on the channel for you guys, there's also that personal aspect where do I want to spend the money on it? And for a lot of them, it was like, no, I really don't. This one came out. It looked interesting. Started out as an eau de parfum base level, which is something that doesn't normally happen within the light blue line. It's a 100 milliliter bottle, whereas the typical sizes are 125 and 75. And the presentation was also a bit different as well, as you can see here, just looks a bit more unique. And so my interest was piqued. I purchased it full retail. I did my first impressions. You can still go back and watch it, immediately blown away. If you're a fan of grapefruit in the most realistic form possible, this is it right here. You gotta get your nose on this one. 
Unfortunately, again, following this same trend, getting harder to find. Light Blue Italian Love was released as a limited edition, which I also love, but this stuff all kind of coincides with each other. You know, the things that us collectors really like and, and kind of fall in love with are often getting discontinued because they more so cater to us who have smelled tons and things rather than people who really haven't and they're just looking to get something that smells good. And so unfortunately that's kind of what plagued this one here. This just isn't gonna sell like Owen Tense and a lot of the other flankers, unfortunately. But again, I'm telling you guys, this one revived the line for me. It got to the point where then after that, I was excited to try them. And I will also say that the new Summer Vibes, which came out last year, back to the 125 ml bottles, is pretty good as well. I think it's definitely an improvement over their last ones. Not as good as this in Italian love, but a step in the right direction. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that they keep this momentum going and they're turning things around a little bit, making things a bit more interesting, but we'll have to see. Regardless of that, this is a big surprise in a positive way. I love this stuff. If you like it as well, I would recommend to always be on the lookout for a backup if you can, because again, it's just you know gonna get harder and harder to find as time goes on. This stuff is great. Next up, we have Zerzhov Naxos, and to be honest, all of its clones and inspirations, because I have quite a few of the clones. They're great, they're much more affordable. Now to be fair, as far as niche goes and as far as Zerzhov goes, Naxos isn't crazy. Keep in mind, this is a 100 milliliter bottle. Typically, they go for around 180 to $190 on discounters, they retail for 250. For 100 milliliters, in the grand scheme of things, that's not horrendous. A lot of the Zerzhov 50 mLs can be going for around the same price. So just to put that into perspective, this one isn't crazy, but again, it still is expensive and there are alternatives out there at a lower price. There's Vo Elegante, which has a similar bottle, frosted glass, and, and kind of has this deal going on for about 37 to $40. So it just depends on what you're after. But this one is a beautiful honey and tobacco scent. It's been hyped up very much and so definitely one that you're familiar with or have likely smelled at this point. But this is one that again just brings back that excitement. You know, it's just something interesting, exciting, it's beast mode, great for winter time. Love it. Next up we have Lome Eau de Parfum by Yves Saint Laurent. This is another perfect example of the flankers just going out of control. So many loam and Lanoui de Lome flankers. And there's a few that are really good. There's a few that you could just pass on and that just aren't all that great. This is one that is really good. And it, really it makes sense. It's a true Eau de Parfum flanker of the original loam. The original loam in and of itself is a favorite of mine. I love it. It's a gentleman's classic. You can't go wrong with OG YSL loam. It's $80, $90 on discounters, which is again, more standard, but it's not a cheapie, but it, you just, you can't mess it up. It would be a great everyday signature scent. It can be viewed as a little bit dated because it came out a long time ago, and chances are a lot of people have adopted that as their signature scent, but the Eau de Parfum comes in to fix that. It just takes that DNA, gives it a bit of a cognac twist, focuses a little bit more on the woods. You get some bitter orange in here. It's a big step in a different direction. Dare I even say a decent sized improvement. Like it really is just a, a bit more refreshing and more of a different change of pace if you're someone who has worn the original loan for years. It still has that DNA, which I love, but they make it different enough to make it warrant worth a purchase. And so getting this one in after spending so much time collecting all of the other loams and Lanoui de loams, this one was a big pleasant surprise. Azaro Wanted by Night was another one that was a big uh, improvement over the original Wanted, which I had purchased when it first came out long ago and didn't love. You know, it wasn't something that I found myself ever wearing. Rarely did I even feature it in videos. It just didn't do it for me. Too lemon heavy in a way that just didn't work for me personally. That being said, as far as the mass pleasing market goes, it's an A plus scent. On discounters, it's affordable and people love it. People think it's, you know, smells great. So compliment factor is very high, but from a collector or enthusiast standpoint, wasn't really for me. Wanted by Night 
is a really, really smart and well done, well thought out flanker, and it's all in the name. Truly is a nighttime version of that original, focusing on cinnamon, some tobacco, and you're still getting the fruity notes that are found in the original, which kind of ties it back to that. So it still has some of that bubble gummy smell that was found in the original and also kind of made it somewhat similar to Invictus. When you take a look at them, Invictus, Wanted, they kind of go hand in hand. They are pretty similar, but this one is just a lot more refined, a little bit more grown up and mature and just world's more interesting to me. Definitely recommend checking out Wanted by Night and you know, let's be fair, most of you probably have it or have smelled it at this point. But if you haven't somehow, this is one that has slipped through the cracks all of these years after all of the hype, give it a try. You don't have a whole lot to lose with this. Worst case, you don't like it, give it to someone else. If you wanted, they would probably love it. And if you don't like it, you can wear this and get compliments and that might change your mind on it if you're someone who's motivated by mass appeal. Going over with the cheapy up next, we have Lacoste Loam, just the original. It's got orange, rhubarb, and few other notes in here, some minor light woods and some musk. Great for spring, nice creamy orange. And as far as Lacoste goes, they have a lot of good scents on the cheaper side of things, some more, even more affordable than this that are just kind of a bit more boring to me. Not that they're bad, they're great mass pleasing scents, again, going back to that, but they're just not as exciting. And I find this one to be really, really unique for what it's worth. For a $35 scent, this one provides a lot more value than you might think on paper. I think they really did a good job with this one. It is something that stands out, and at this price point, you can't go wrong. Now, once you start comparing it to retail prices or you know things of that nature, or if you were comparing this to $90, $100 designers that are just more unique, it's going to pale in comparison. But at this price point, discounter-wise, it is hard to beat this one for a spring scent. I think it's great. Pretty much any guy could pick this one up and wear it and just get a lot of use out of it. And again, for me, this is, was a pleasant surprise when I blind bought this. Last up for this video, we have Tom Ford Beau Du Jour of their more signature line here, a bit more affordable, Aromatic Fougere. Now this has been around for a long time in the private blend line. Again, more expensive, 50 mLs for, I don't know, I can't remember what they were going for. Discounter wise, mid 100s, low 200s for 50 mL, somewhere around in there. This is 100 mL for in the mid 100s. So price per milliliter is significantly better on this one, which is good. I love aromatic fougeres. People are gonna smell this, some people are going to smell this and think that it smells like a grandpa or it smells old. And I can't be mad at that because it does have more of a classic feel Hence the fact that this is a barbershop style scent. But Tom Ford has a way of doing it to where it's a bit more modernized and it, it just does have a bit more usability behind it, in my opinion. And I do think this one could hold up really well, even still in 2024. Another one that would be a great signature scent if you had deeper pockets and you wanted to wear something like this every day, you definitely could. You're gonna burn through it a little bit quicker. And again, it's gonna be a bit more money, but it's something that just takes no thought or effort whatsoever. You spray this on and you're set for anything. And in a world where men's fragrances are getting sweeter and sweeter and you know, whatever trends they might be following, this is a really nice change of pace. It was another one that I didn't think I was going to like as much as I did, but I love it. Really good stuff. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for me. Some fragrances that essentially saved my interest in this hobby. Again, even if I didn't have these, I would still be doing this today, right? But he's definitely brought that spark back for me. Another exciting thing is uh, getting into a new space here. Again, bear with me, this is coming together slowly. I'm getting some of the shelves in and can you see some bottles? Yeah, right here, light blue, Missoni, and you can't see anything else yet. But coming along and so that's fun as well. It's also a new year and we're getting a whole bunch of new releases all at once coming out, which I'm gonna be covering, so make sure you get subscribed. And again, for anything rare, discontinued, or hard to find that you want to get in your collection, jump on my mailing list, texting list. I promise I'll get you taken care of. Anytime something good comes up, I'll send out a notification. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.